This is what I normally look like, and this is what I looked like for the better part of a month recently. I had Bell's palsy. Um, that's what a smile looks like on the face of someone with Bell's palsy. It's pretty maniacal and it's actually pretty terrifying. You can't blink your eye, you can't move your mouth, you can't move anything on your face. The nerves just don't work on one half of your face when you have Bell's palsy. And it can take up to six months to recover from it. So you can imagine that I was on a pretty big downward spiral with this thing happening. Worried that my face wouldn't recover. Why did this happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? A whole victim mentality thing was happening for me. Um, and I was really terrified. It was a very, very scary experience. Um, and all that was in there. But also what was in there were some upward lifting thoughts because I have a positivity practice in my life and that's very different than Pollyanna-ish. That's more of a curiosity for me. Hmm, what am I gonna learn about myself with only half my face working? Wow, what kind of filter will this provide as I meet people and they see my face go halfway skewed every time I want to talk? It was those sorts of things that allowed me to have a, a wider peripheral vision in the midst of my victimization. That wider peripheral vision allowed me to notice a woman who walked up to the counter at a hotel and hand her acupuncturist cards across the counter. When she did, I said, do you know anything about Bell's palsy? And she said, oh, I know a lot about Bell's palsy. So she helped me recover from this with acupuncture, which I'd never done before. And two things specifically that I saw in my life that work with positivity is that I could broaden my perspective, literally create more connections, and build my best future. Dr. Barbara Fredrickson, who's been studying positivity for decades, tells us that these are normal things. Broaden and build two things that happen with people who have positivity. Another is that they are just psychologically resilient. They bounce. Yes, the things that we don't like in life still affect them, just like the Bell's palsy affected me, but they recover faster than people who don't have high positivity in their lives. They're just psychologically resilient and more resourceful. Just like I was resourceful enough to be looking for anything that could help me through this, through this Bell's palsy thing, people who have positivity in their lives are more resourceful. Now that's for individuals and it's also for teams. So all of this is true for teams and I think especially true for agile teams where we create an environment that lets this kind of positivity stuff work. Positivity, it's not have a happy day, it's not put a smile on your face, it is real science. People who do laboratory experiments, who have reams and reams of data and very complicated mathematical formulas to show us what positivity does in our lives. And these are just some of the scientists studying it. Marcelo Sada is one of those. He shows us this is what a team with low positivity looks like. A team with meh, kind of so-so positivity looks like this mathematically. And a team with high positivity looks like this, this beautiful big butterfly structure. Some of you may recognize the mathematics behind this. I think it's very interesting that this butterfly figure shows up in teams with high positivity. They literally have more resources. They're more resourceful. They can bounce. They broaden and build. And the way they get it is three to one. Three positive things to one negative thing. That's the positivity tipping point. At three to one or higher, your team looks like that with those big, broad wings. Now. A team that's off the hook is five to one. Five positive things to one negative thing. Guess what? That's what you need for your marriage too. Now there's a big payoff to positivity. Those high performing teams weren't called high performing by Dr. Losada because they were happier. They were called high performing because they had a higher increase in profitability, customer satisfaction, and better overall 360 evaluations. They were paying off for their companies. Now let's talk about the payoff for people. We know that carrots and sticks don't work. We've known this in our hearts for a long time. Science has been telling us this. And now Dan Pink brings the science of motivation to the New York Times bestseller list so that hopefully companies will pay attention to this message. Companies still using carrots and sticks are way behind the curve. The things that motivate people in the Agile teams I coach are things that go along with the high concept age we're in, mastery, autonomy, purpose. Again, this is all from Dan Pink. Mastery, autonomy, and purpose in our lives. Those are the real motivators, and Agile gives us this beautiful fertile ground from which to allow those to spring forth. Now, other things spring forth too. What would happen if your team 
had broadened, build, bounce, and resourcefulness if they had positivity going for, the, for them, and if each person on your team felt a sense of autonomy, mastery, and purpose. I theorized they would live in a world of abundance. They would have more and bigger and better ideas. When the man gets them down, they would bounce back faster. And if that's not enough, positivity improves your health. So Dr. Barbara Fredrickson has partnered with a lot of other scientists, a lot of laboratory experiments and other things tell us that these wonderful health benefits result from positivity as well. While less depression, hmm, would that be good for your teams? I bet you it would. So you might be saying at this point, I want me some of that. If you want some of that, I have two suggestions for you. Number one, live a positivity practice yourself. Feel what it's like in your own life. And as fast as you possibly can, give it to others. So living it yourself, hmm, you might be wondering, how am I going to do that? I say two things. Keep track of your positivity to negativity ratio and notice trends over time. Notice what amps up the positivity. Notice what tamps you down. Also, you have to do some active things to increase your positivity. This is a practice. Meditation, being grateful, you probably knew about those too. And if you're like me, you've been probably trying to do those more in your life. Here are some easier ones. Immerse yourself in new ideas rather than recycling old ones and set much stronger boundaries so you're not taken advantage of. Those are two of 20 such very practical things you can do to increase your positivity. Deborah Regal, a coach friend of mine, created a PDF of 20 things you can do that I'm going to share with you at the end of this. So live it yourself and then give it to others. You'll be so shining they might ask you what's your secret. They ask me that every once in a while. Even if they don't ask, on your teams, do these very specific things. Promote inquiry over advocacy, positivity over negativity, and people being focused on other rather than just on themselves. Promote questioning over defending a position. Questioning over defending a position will build the connectivity on your team. Connectivity is that secret ingredient that Dr. Losada discovered in the teams with that beautiful butterfly shape where they can broaden and build their best future together. Connectivity is an important thing in this world, and especially on Agile teams where we ask them to come up with great ideas. So if you want more, there's all kinds of books that can help you. Here are some. And scientific research and papers. They're, they abound. Just go type positivity. You'll find it. Positivityratio.com. The online tool is there. And 20 activities to positively impact your positivity. As I said, a coach colleague of mine has created that. This is your team on positivity. Mm. Breathtaking. Expansive. If you want more like this, I have a whole book of ideas like this, both the provocative and the practical. At coachingagileteams.com, find out about it. And that's what I look like now, just four weeks after getting Bell's palsy. No six-month recovery for me. Positivity works.